My name is Rita Khayat, and I am privileged. And because I'm privileged, I get to stand here today and talk to you. When I first started writing my script for this very talk, my mentors advised me to stay away from politics. Nonetheless, what I had to say is that staying away from politics is a privilege by itself. Now, I do hope everybody here knows that when people like myself are addressing privilege, it is not a debate. It is rather something complex and essential. You see, it connects to all our lives and all the factors around our lives that shape them. Staying away from politics or not getting political is a privilege that women cannot afford. Not only women, but persons of color and all minorities, religious minorities, racial, ethnic, sexual minorities, because not being a minority is a privilege. As a young woman, I am most familiar with the notion of gender privilege or the lack of that notion, to be more accurate. Our lives as women are shaped by misogyny and by sexism from the moment that we are born. As a little girl, I had to choose my hobbies and interests based on what is deemed appropriate. As a university student, I have to fight in the major I want to study because it's not deemed as the most suitable for women. I am expected to get married and have children, but studying law, to later become a human rights activist or a lawyer or a judge might get in the way of that. And you see, my male friends don't have to suffer these problems, nor will they have to suffer what it means to be paid less than their equally capable and equally qualified colleagues simply because they were born with this gender privilege. They were born with the privilege of being males. The privilege that should not be a privilege. Gender privilege is when you are safe when you go to the police and you are safe when you seek justice because the law itself does not discriminate against you. It's when men can go to the store, buy the razors to shave without any added taxation. But the same cannot be said for women who need to buy their monthly menstrual products because apparently getting your period is considered a luxury that requires added taxation. Gender privilege is when you're not scared of getting hurt if you decide to tell your date that you'd rather head home instead of going somewhere more private. It's when rapists are marrying their victims, not held accountable for their crimes. Privilege is when the person of minority in the workplace has to work double and triple as hard as everyone else to get appreciated and acknowledged. Privilege is when persons of color ethnic minorities facing racism and prejudice and hate on a daily basis. Privilege is decades of so-called science that is devoted to proving your intellectual superiority at the expense of those with darker skin color. Being privileged means not having to read about the slavery of your ancestors not having to listen to and feel pain for the robbery of your grandparents, not seeing your parents falsely accused and imprisoned. And being privileged means not witnessing your brothers and sisters being shot unarmed. Being privileged is when, you, when you've never heard of the story of the three boys of color getting purposefully hit by a truck and then fined for not wearing reflective clothing while the driver that hit them walks free. It's when you don't have to worry about anybody trying to deprive you of your right to vote or of your right to get married. And it's when your political preferences are normal preferences, but they're political and don't necessarily get you in jail or killed. Privilege, ladies and gentlemen, is when Leonardo DiCaprio can play the character of a man in a wheelchair, but an actual man in a wheelchair cannot play that character. What I'm talking about is able-bodied privilege. It's when able-bodied actors and actresses are cast to play differently abled characters at the expense of real, differently abled human beings. 
But most importantly of all, privilege is not something to be ashamed of having. The biggest problems that are happening today around the world that are affecting the human race are because some people refuse to acknowledge their privileges. But before we get to acknowledgement of privilege, let us first understand something together, you and I. Let us suppose the scenario. Let us suppose that a certain person, a man, for instance, is non-sexist. This non-sexist man still benefits from sexism because sexism gives him and other men priority over women. And the same situation goes for all privileged people. And that is exactly why, if you ask me, simply admitting that we are somehow perceived as more entitled is not enough. We need to work on altering these structures that are giving us this unfair privilege. And that doesn't mean we have to stop being male or stop being white or stop being able-bodied. What that means is that we need to make sure that these identities we possess don't put others at a disadvantage. It also means we have to employ these privileges to help those of us who don't enjoy them. Because I think we never really get to understand, to, to wrap our heads around the idea of privilege properly. So every single person of us can relate to being both privileged and underprivileged. How? Take me as an example. I am underprivileged because some people still seem to think that my femininity can get in the way of my rationality, that, that I cannot take a decision. But ironically, I recall that every time I do take a decision, I'm labeled bossy and, and, and cold. I am a young Muslim woman. If I, tomorrow, decide to wear the veil, my goal of becoming judge in Lebanon will be immediately shattered, just like that. Like so many girls, so I'm not alone. Like so many girls, I suffer from this gender privilege because some people can't see past my hair and my skin. And I, on the other hand, I cannot seem to convince them that I'm more than just an appearance. But simultaneously, I find myself very privileged because I have been brought up in a household capable enough of providing me with a good education and accordingly enough experience that told me to be brave enough to voice out my opinions without having to worry about whose feelings I have to safeguard or what labels, what names I will be called. So in this sense, I'm more privileged than this other girl who has the same aspirations as myself, could probably be better than me at writing and public speaking. Only, only this girl could not be here in my place because she did not have the privileges that I did. And if she finds fault and injustice, if this girl finds herself discriminated against, she's not entitled to speak up about these things like I am. But however, if we haven't noticed, both scenarios do lead to the same result. So if I were a bit more or a bit less privileged, I wouldn't be standing here and we wouldn't be having this talk. This era that we're currently living in, it's the era of social activism. More than ever, we see young activists take to the street to stand up for the injustice they face, to take action. Good news, right? No, not good news, because what's wrong with this picture is that they, the underprivileged, are the majority, if not the only ones who are holding the protest signs, the only ones who are put in the face of armed forces ordered to maintain civil peace. So before we seek to end our own struggles with being discriminated against, and before we ask others to support us, we need to examine how and what we are doing in order to end other struggles, how we are supporting those who are less privileged than us. Because if any positive change is to occur in putting an end, a stop to discrimination, each and every person of us has a role to play. So this sounds very simple, but the rich should help the poor, and men should fight for gender equality. And institutions must be structured to at least meet the needs of all members in the society, abled and differently abled. And because fundamental rights are in principle for everybody, in practice, they should be granted to everybody. 
it is about time that transparent and open conversations on prejudice take place within local communities at national and international levels. And these conversations must soon become discourses that are able to shape our attitudes on one hand and change our behaviors on the other when dealing with or when responding to cases of unfair privilege. But such discourses demand courage and perseverance and sacrifices and many more. But in this uncertain world that we are currently living in, it's time we truly act, act for the sake of others before our own. I, for instance, have started to employ my privileged voice whenever possible for those who are less privileged. I hope you do too. Thank you.